Will health insurance ever be affordable? Right now, the US per capita spend on healthcare is over $11,000 per person, per year. That means every man, woman and child on average needs to pay $11,000 a year for their own health care no matter what type of government program you have or who ultimately pays the bill. If you live to be 75, then you'll likely spend $825,000 in 2019 adjusted dollars for your own health care, there's no escaping this. Now, why do we have insurance? The simple answer is because it spreads the risk around. Yes, you might see $11,000 per year in expense averaged over the course of your life, but you'll have years where your spend is close to zero, and if you're like most Americans, you'll spend over half your lifetime total in the last year or two of your life. If you're unlucky enough to come down with cancer or some other terrible disease, the financial spending spike could come at any time, and there's no saying how high it might go. In years gone by, Americans said, Gee, wouldn't it be nice not to worry about a sudden change in my health pushing me into bankruptcy? The insurance company charges a fee, and then spread the risk across millions of people so that you don't have to worry about a sudden health crisis financially crushing you. Okay, now when you think about adding an insurance company or your favorite government system to the calculation it should be clear that the insurance company, or government, can't charge the average American less than the per capita spend, or they're not going to be in business for long. In America, we've had a few decades of debate over this, but really what we're debating is who pays what. We created a shell game where we shift costs between individuals, employers and taxpayers, trying to come up with a system that everyone is happy with. But at the same time, government regulation and other issues are causing that $11,000 per year number I spoke about earlier to rise at two to three times the rate of inflation. When the number gets big enough, no matter how you slice it, it won't be palatable. That's where we are today in America. Those big government believers also turn to massive wealth distribution systems. Used to be that 10 to 15% of Americans couldn't afford insurance, mostly because the high risk they represented made insurance expensive for them. Now, we believe in wealth redistribution, we take money from the younger and healthier or more affluent, and give it to illegals and the people that refuse to pay for their own coverage. We actually have more people uninsured or underinsured today, but since the politically correct groups are covered, who cares? Now, some dirty lying politicians like to point their sanctimonious finger at the insurance companies and blame them for the high costs. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Insurance companies combined account for less than 3% of the healthcare spend, and most of what they do would still need to be done, even if you outlawed insurance. I have no particular love for insurance companies, but the simple truth is that insurance premiums aren't going down anytime soon, unless we find the courage to get government out of healthcare and let the free market work its miracles. It is affordable in the UK, but then we have a health service owned by the people, run by the people, for the people. We call it the National Health Service and are we are very, very proud of it. If you want one in the USA you will have to vote for people like Bernie Saunders. His opponents will telephone you he is a socialist to make him look bad, and they'll say he's anti-Semitic, a bad person and all that, but you'll just have to ignore all that if you want a genuinely good service for a reasonable price. Socialism, which is public ownership and is what makes the NHS such good value for money, is actually a very good thing in some industries. Anyone who tells you differently either, know what they are talking about or is lying. Health insurance in every Western country other than the USA is cheap and affordable. In fact it is only ever paid by those in work aged approximately 18 to 60. Outside that age gap in the young unemployed and retired it is 100% free to the individual. Please America it's about time you became a civilized country. There are no excuses, in each and every other country they used to have a system like the US until that. Is the people demanded something better at least 32 countries have government-sponsored healthcare which the US could simply copy or get ideas from. After all this time I don't think they are capable of doing it. There is too much corruption in the US system. The healthcare drug lobbies are just too powerful like the NRA. So they pay twice what Canada pays per person and in return get one of the worst healthcare systems in the West only if the US goes single-payer health healthcare. 
Remember that your taxes will increase but not nearly enough to make it more expensive than the current situation.